welcome back to the channel daughter of increase my name is nate denise for those of you who are new to the channel or who just happen to stumble across this video and i post some videos every wednesday all about my faith god christ and expanding the kingdom of god and i do that through bible studies book reviews discussions and more and today as the title says i'm going to be doing finally my top 10 books from 2020 and i'm kind of sad because i don't have any non-fiction books on here and it's not that there weren't any great non-fiction books they just weren't five star reads if that makes sense so i probably will do like my top five favorites from last year because i don't have any five star reads um from last year i don't know i have to check through again on my goodreads to see but um yeah so we're gonna talk about all of my favorite biblical fiction christian fiction books from last year and i'm super super excited for this so let me take a sip of my water all right and we're gonna jump right in so i have all of my notes here for you guys i'm um, really not notes i just have the order that it's in um these honestly are in no particular order but i will say the first two books are definitely like my first two favorites of the year they just have to be the other ones well no i will say it's in order yeah it's in order because i have everything together okay so we're just gonna dive in so the first one should be no surprise to people and technically this book should not be on my list it's i think it's been on my list <laughs> for favorites for the past couple years but because it was re-released in the new updated edition for the 10th anniversary i have to include it because i read it and that's gonna be pearl in the sand by tessa Abshaw. i mean <laughs> if you know how much i love tessa there's no way i wasn't gonna read this book and there's no way that i wasn't gonna annotate it and give it a five stars i mean i've read this book so many times already this is a tearjerker of a read i did do a reading vlog for this for this edition so just click the article watch it um five star read all the way this book gives me the tears all the time i just follow base the, 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 the let's let's rewind so this book basically follows rahab and her conversion to believe in god and um becoming one of god's chosen children and the title pearl in the sand has so much meaning to me because i can connect with the character of rahab that uh tessa used um not used but created and her use of scripture and the use of really understanding your worth in god's eyes when you feel like you're not worth anything is so phenomenal and it's just that one chapter which chapter is it it'd be that one chapter that just guts you i don't I don't remember what chapter it was oh my gosh i can't remember but um is it 16 or something 20 something i think it's 24 yes it's chapter 24 chapter 24 makes me cry um if you read the book and you have the book i would say go to chapter 24 and you'll know what i'm talking about with that scene um where it basically explains the title that's another thing i love about tessa is her books always explain um the meaning of the title within the story towards the end which is beautiful and just uh, this book has such a place in my heart i love it so much so much so much i connect with rahab on so many different levels and um it's it's I can gush about this book. I'm not going to, but this is literally my like my number, my number one favorite biblical fiction book. She's my number one favorite biblical fiction author, and I will stand behind anything she writes. So, obviously, I'm excited for her upcoming release. I think it's Jewel of the Nile or something like that. I think that's the name of it. Um, but yeah, I'm I love it, and I'm here for this new cover. Like this new cover is amazing. If you guys want to see the old cover, I do have it. So here's the older one which you honestly can't buy anymore and if you can find it i would say grab it while you can but if you can't definitely get your hands on an updated one but my number one for 2020 obviously just phenomenal phenomenal if you're not ready for the tears don't pick it up okay um following that we have another one which gutted the mess out of me if you saw my vlog i did um i forgot what it was called i overwhelmed or something like that click the ad to go watch it um i told you how this book actually kind of like jolted me i guess because i read this right after my birthday um and it wrecked me and i don't remember was it this page i'm really gonna try to find a page because i can't remember what page it was i can't remember the page now guys and i feel terrible because that page was highly important to me oh my gosh i can't remember the page but this book gutted me just know that this book gutted me to the core and it made me realize a lot was it this page it probably was this page i don't remember 245 maybe or i don't know i don't remember but the book that i'm talking about 
is a turn to me by Lynn Austin. Oh my god, this is the first book in the Restoration Chronicles, right? Restoration Chronicles trilogy. Um, and this book, oh my god, I just I loved everything about this. First of all, I loved Zechariah. This follows um Zechariah when he was young and him becoming a prophet. Who else did it follow? Um it followed the King Cyrus days and when the Israelites um were basically banished from Jerusalem and they were able to go back to Jerusalem type thing. Read this. This book will get you. Um and I was frustrated reading this because of Yael. Yael, Yael is that her name? Yael. I have to remember if that's her name. I have to remember because she she oh, she frustrated me so much. She frustrated me so much. I wanted to punch her in her throat. I think her name was Yael. Why can't I find this girl's name now? Yes, Yael. I know it wasn't crazy. Her name was Yael. Oh, I wanted to punch that little girl in her face. Oh, this one just stuck on her throat. Um, if you read this book, you know why. But um, just everything about Zechariah and all the things that he was talking about really hit me hard because I read this literally during my birthday week or the week after my birthday and just the words and I, I, I'm, I'm trying to remember for some reason I cannot remember the page I think it was page 245 and I'm I can't remember you guys right now I, I think it's that page nope it was three three oh three oh nine to three ten um so it was a part where um Zechariah was asking his grandfather how long he has to wait um you know for God and for justice and the grandfather said how long I suppose it depends on how long it takes us to learn the lessons of faith um then Zechariah said no then the grandfather said life is seldom fair but we can use the time to to nurture our faith or to nurture doubt that's what these times of testing are all about um and that for some reason i don't know why that just brought tears to my eyes and really gutted me and made me a hot mess of a wreck if you saw that vlog you know what i mean but this book definitely has a special place in my heart um i i love this i love the characters i loved all of the quotes i love all of the lessons i love the use of scripture i love the world i loved everything about this book so much um and i highly i definitely could see me rereading this i enjoy the entire trilogy but this was literally like my five star read for me so loved it so much so that's that moving on to number three number three i already read this book uh i read this book recently actually was it in 2020 yeah i read it in 2020 um and i loved it like i read it in december and it's definitely a five star for me and i did a reading blog quickly i had to go watch it but it's providence by barbara in britain um this is the first book in her tribes of israel series and it follows hannah it basically follows a young girl um the young servant girl from second king chapter five in naaman who was uh, told to go dip himself in the Jordan River seven times to cleanse himself from leprosy or whatever it was that he had. And <sighs> everything about this book was amazing. Um, the romance, I was here for. The characters, I loved. I loved the use of scripture. I also loved the lessons, um, not just the faith aspects, but you understanding that sometimes when you're dealing with something, God will use your family or somebody that's related to you as a vessel for your healing purpose. And oh, this was stunning. If you saw my vlog, it's non-spoilery. Of course, you can watch it. You'll know why. But this was everything. So five-star read. Okay. Moving on to the next one. I also did a reading vlog for this. I think most of these have reading vlogs. <laughs> so I'm going to try to leave as many reading vlogs as I can in the cards. And if I can't, I'll leave the I'll leave a link for all of them down below. But um, I have a reading vlog for The Girl Behind the Red Robe by Ted Decker and Michelle Decker. Um, a father-daughter duo. And this book is everything to me. Okay? Everything. I love it. The first time I read it, five stars. The second time I reread it, I gave it a 4.5 only because I knew what was going to happen. So I didn't get the full thrill, suspense um, sort of feels. But this book really focuses on our fears and how we allow our fears to really control us and um, rule us. And I just, this was everything, you guys. Everything. Powerful, powerful read. Fun. Some people might not like it because um, it does, it's, it's not a cult per se, but um, it's kind of like, the enemy using the word of God to pervert the people or to confuse the people and make them form an unexpected cult in a sense and um just everything about this book was beautiful 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 I loved it so much and um it's reading vlog just go watch it I mean I'm gonna pretty much say that for all these books because I've, I've read them all I love them all and they all have reading vlogs so next one Y'all know I couldn't have a top five without having a Connie Lynn, right? 
you know that and for that i have like flames in the night by connie lincoln set this is the fourth and final book in the cities of refuge series i mean why not this one follows terza right yeah terza and liam and um, the reason why i love this book so much is because it's connected to another book that she wrote from her previous trilogy which i loved okay i loved it so much and um it deals with espionage and terza is a female spy and i just i loved it it was gorgeous it was beautiful you see the tabs right you do you see the, do you see the glorious tabs on this book okay um it was a satisfying conclusion to the series it gave me everything that i wanted for um mariah and derek it gave me everything i wanted of all of the children that they had it gave me everything i wanted where it combined the entire series plus the third and final book from the out from egypt series so i mean when i say satisfying i mean satisfying amazing beautifully written and i i had to include it i just i loved everything about this book so we have that and the cover is gorgeous so i do have a reading blog if i can't if you can't click the eye in the cards then go down below to see the reading blog so moving on the next book I have I don't have co physical copies of the series yet and I will be getting physical copies because me and Stephanie actually buddy read the entire trilogy we love the entire trilogy and for this I'm putting books two and three together as my number six pick and that's going to be the story raider and the story hunter right yeah story raider is book two story hunter is book three and this is a Christian fantasy it wrecked me wrecked me so bad um, it is beautiful. I love the magic aspects. I love the abilities. I love the faith conversations. I love the scripture use. I love just the realness and authenticity of the characters and the growth in you seeing how anger can really trigger you and anger can cause you to do harm to yourself and to others and just <laughs> it is so beautiful. <laughs> so beautiful. Definitely probably my number two favorite Christian fantasy yeah i think it's my number two favorite christian fantasy because my number one favorite christian fantasy is right here mark of the raven the ravenwood saga number one so i think the story peddler story what I don't, the weaver trilogy is what it's called that will be my number two you probably couldn't even see because i was pointing behind the pitches but behind the pitches is the raven saga trilogy so yeah okay so moving on number six um my number six is definitely going to be Bathsheba by Angela Hunt so this book shockingly enough I gave it five stars and I always have an issue with Bathsheba books now I do own her books if you guys can see I own Esther all the way to um Paul Apostle of Christ so I even have her newest uh series that she is coming out and I had read Esther gave it four stars but didn't really care I read Delilah gave it four stars because I had skipped over this because I really loved the cover of Delilah so um I was like you know what i have a feeling that bathsheba is going to be the five star and it was um so this is biblical fiction all about bathsheba obviously in king david and this actually focuses on um the rape of bathsheba and if you guys don't know what i'm talking about king david did rape her if you didn't know that it's in the bible um it doesn't say it per se but you literally can read between the lines and see that he was she raped she was raped by king david um and no one can refute that king david obviously did stupid things he killed people he raped people i mean he meh, he's king david but he was still a man after god's own heart and thus um this really focuses on that aspect of it and how she dealt with it her feelings towards it um her growing to sort of love king david and how people kind of made her shush about the rape and things like that it, if you're not cool with rape or conversations about rape or the bible talking about rape then don't read this book because obviously it's gonna trigger you um you guys know that i can connect with the rape topic um if you haven't seen my testimony video do so i'll leave it probably not in the cards because i probably use all the cards so i'll leave a link down below but um yeah this really talks about rape so much and if you, the bible itself is gruesome um it's not this like fairy tale book the bible is gruesome it talks about rape it talks about murder it talks about incest it talks about slicing your wife up in pieces and sending her to the night like it the bible is gritty okay um so i was really excited that angela wasn't afraid to um talk about it you know and i love reading biblical fiction books where the authors are not afraid to talk about topics that christians believe are taboo because it's not taboo it's written in the bible okay so i i loved everything about this i I love being able to feel like David and Bathsheba were real people because when we're reading the Bible, we typically glance over the whole 
he took her without her permission thing. But when I read this book, I'm like, nah, he, he raped her. He really raped her. And she probably had feelings and emotions we don't know because the Bible doesn't give us everything, okay? It gives us the key things, but not everything. It doesn't tell us how people felt or what they were thinking. All we know is that she lost her child. She moved on. She cried. It was it is what it was. And then she had another kid, Solomon. But um, I love that Angela did not shy away from giving her feelings and emotions and um being able to connect with it on a personal level so i really really did enjoy this book and if you're not like i said a fan of rape um you might not want to read this book so yeah okay so then i read a jill eileen book and a jill eileen book i was like you know what i really want to give it a five stars because i did read another one i read the heart of a king by jill eileen and um i enjoyed it but it was frustrating so i gave it like a four or 4.5 star rating or something like that and i do own her other books on ebook but i wanted to see if i could give one of her books a five stars and i did and i gave a star for a five star which is my favorite esther novel i love this book so much because it gave um one reason I really loved it is because you got to see the humanity of, um, what is this woman's name? Vashti. Um, normally in the Bible, we all we know about Vashti is that she turned down the king and it was what it was. He kicked her out because he was so drunk and blah, 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 blah. But I love that Jill gave Vashti humanity. Um, and then you got to see the other sort of wives of Xerxes. And Xerxes, if you don't know, is, um, the Persian name of, ooh, what is this man's actual biblical name? His biblical name is, I feel like she had a chart in here, but I can't remember. If I can't find it, I'll put it on the screen. His biblical name. Yeah, I'll put his biblical name on the screen because that's this is what he's called in the Bible. But apparently in the NIV, is this the NIV translation? Let me see. In the... NIV translation they call him Xerxes but he does have another name in other translations so it's on the screen but um you really get to see the humanity of Xerxes or that name can't remember um you get to see the humanity of Vashi you get to see Esther grow and her relationship with Mor Mordecai and you also get to see Haman who we can't stand um so this really was just amazing it gave me all the feels as a reader with the enjoyment of a reader but it also gave me the faith aspects it gave me some biblical understanding of um the book of esther so i adored this in this cover she is everything okay so yeah um moving on we have two more books to go so coming in at number nine right yeah number nine um i don't know if i did a reading vlog for this and if i didn't do a reading vlog i, I talked about it can't remember but i have a by tasca lee so you guys know i was on a binge cake to read all of tasca's books right okay two of her books made my top 10 list for 2020 and hava definitely came in at number nine i loved this book so much again like i was saying with angela hunt's um Bathsheba, how she didn't shy away from topics that were taboo tasca didn't shy away at all so this one basically tells the story of eve um adam and eve from the eyes of eve and the fall of man and this book i loved it so much because you got to see a lot of their first the first time eve was hit on the first time that um you know she gave birth the first time that the animals were killed for them the first time that they um had to experience life and we don't know what happened all we know is that they was kicked out they had Cain and Abel Cain killed Abel then they had Seth and life moved on we don't really know how they may have felt what they were probably possibly going through the emotions and how miscommunication came about like Tosca she ain't she ain't hold no bars okay she ain't hold no bars with this book and I loved that again I love when authors have no qualms with stepping out of the box and giving us what could have been obviously go into these books with a sort of brain of course they're biblical fiction they're based off the bible but there's also fictional aspects to it that can come from the author's own opinions and thoughts and I don't mind that take with a grain of salt be mindful but um this was so fun to read because I've always wondered how did they experience their first you know fight how did they experience miscommunication how did they feel about having to kill and slaughter these animals that they really have to take care of um and things like that and i just i loved it so five star read for me of course and the final one is again a tosca lee and that's going to be iscariot by her and this is her take of judas the betrayer of jesus and his story um his beginning to the end and i enjoyed this honestly it gave me a feel for what could have been going on in Iscariot's mind, Judas's mind, as things happened. And all that we know is that um, he was angry, he betrayed Jesus, he felt bad at the end, and then committed suicide. Um, but this gives us like a background, and his background was heart 
heartbreaking okay heartbreaking and i also like that she kind of made it seem like he was a part of the jews that really thought that jesus was going to come and kill the people you know jesus didn't come to kill people he came to um bring grace peace and love um and i just i i enjoyed everything about this it gave me the feels like i tied it up so you guys can see i thoroughly enjoyed everything about this book and it made this was what spurred me on to wanting to read more of her books i think the only book i have to read now from her that's like biblical kind of christian biblical related is going to be demon that the book demon i do want to try to read that this year and then i'm going to get into her i think the religious suspense novel she has but um uh, yeah this was amazing like i enjoyed it i found some great quotes in here i'm just i loved it so much i mean there, there's no there's nothing else i can say so these are my top 10 for 2020 i'm gonna try to pick them up for you guys i don't know if that's gonna work oops sorry i'm checking the camera i apologize I, i'm not gonna pick this up you guys can i my top 10 minus the other two books because they're ebooks but uh can i get it? yes i can <laughs> so these are my top 10 no phone days my top 10 for um the year i i love these books these books were all five star reads for me um i did have some honorable mentions um but i'm not even gonna talk about those i probably will do a separate video all of my honorable mentions but yeah those were my top 10 for 2020 let me know if you guys read any of these books um if you want me to do like a sit down discussion or a review for any of these books let me know because i do want to get back into doing sit down video reviews um and my book to look makeup tutorials will be coming soon again but um yeah these are all the books that i read i enjoyed them all and i highly highly recommend them all mainly biblical fiction with a few um let me see yeah i think these are all biblical fiction except for three um the girl behind the red rope was a mystery suspense thriller type of novel and then the story reader and story hunter were christian fantasies but they all are seeds with great faith aspects and scriptures and things like that so i highly would recommend that but that is it for this video thank you guys for watching reading comment and subscribing and i'll see you guys in the next video bye mm -hmm.